I'm Brian Guido Hassan, a co-founder and CEO of Smart Office Energy Solutions, where we're providing on-demand energy savings for the smart office. This presentation was about our experience in the 2011 Clean Tech Open competition, where we made it to the global finals in the energy efficiency category. And I presented this presentation at the Clean Tech Open 2014 competition launch in the Southeast region. First, a little background on my startup and why we even care about office energy efficiency. So offices waste an obscene amount of energy, 50 to 70 percent, according to most studies. And it's a big problem, costing office owners and tenants more than 300 billion with a B dollars each year. So Smart OES has developed a solution that actually reduces office energy consumption a lot, you know, upwards of 25 percent specifically without having to go in and modify the building at all. We do that with uh, wireless hardware devices that measure power consumption everywhere in the building. And then we use all that big data we're collecting to control power consumption intelligently throughout the office. And because we're measuring power consumption at such a fine-grained level, we can actually really accurately calculate the power consumption of individual employees in an office. And we publish that information and then use some pretty advanced behavioral science to engage those employees in ongoing competition for better energy behaviors. Now, in fact, we've, we've really become so good at this aspect of energy efficiency that uh, today we can actually kind of turn on or turn off extra energy efficiency coming from behavior in the office, which is helping us expand from just kind of the energy efficiency world into the demand response world where we can actually increase the amount of energy efficiency that we're delivering on a moment's notice in response to a peak load event. Now, if you know anything about uh, the space of kind of energy efficiency, um, you, you're probably thinking that there are a number of players out there already doing something kind of sort of like what we are, and that's, that's absolutely the truth. Um, we generally map out the competitive landscape um, with kind of the big incumbents at one end of the axis, the Honeywells and Johnson Controls of the world, which provide significant energy savings, but at a cost and complexity that's really unadoptable by our target market, which is utility paying office occupants. At the other end of the spectrum, you have you know, the energy hubs and the think ecos of the world, which you have to take a more kind of IT approach to energy efficiency. So it's non-invasive, has more rapid payback, but they're really more oriented toward residential or very light commercial solutions. and can't really scale up to meet the needs of large enterprise. So Smart OES is really positioned you know, to combine the best of both of those worlds, turnkey enterprise class energy savings, but with rapid payback and non-invasive installation. And we think that's a pretty big market, about $15 billion worldwide that can be served with that new approach. Now, our story with the Clean Tech Open maybe uh, isn't quite as straightforward as you might expect. Um, this isn't my first startup, it's actually my fifth startup. And uh, so I, I wasn't necessarily sure that we, you know, we needed to go through the rigor moral of the Clean Tech Open. You know, as an entrepreneur, the only thing kind of more valuable than capital is that, you know, your time. You can only spend so much time on, on so many things and anything you decide to spend time on is a trade-off and something else you're not spending time on. Um, so when I first learned about the Clean Tech Open, yeah, I, I frankly wasn't sure it would be worth our time. Um, but under the advice of a really noted Clean Tech venture capitalist, Rob Day, uh, he suggested that we we give it a try, especially because this was really my first major foray into the clean tech world, and I was looking for an opportunity to kind of accelerate my, you know, just kind of establish myself and my company in that clean tech world. I I didn't already have a big um, kind of clean tech network um, or a group of clean tech investors whom I'd made lots of money for in the past, and he thought this might be a good step for us. So uh, we gave it a try, and. I've really distilled out kind of four, what I call major areas of value that the Clean Tech Open created for us. Um, and in kind of ascending order of value, I'll start with, um, you know, there's 
funding, which is what everybody likes to focus on. That's usually what <laughs> what draws people to not just the Clean Tech Open, but any kinds of competitions like this. Um, but I'll you know I'll argue that that's really the least valuable thing that a, a competition like this actually provides. Um, there is some funding provided to you know kind of various stages of winners throughout the competition, but you know funding is a means to an end for a startup. It's not the end in and of itself. And you know funding comes and goes, whereas some of the other uh, types of value that the Clean Tech Open provided for us have been much more kind of lasting and permanent. So you know, funding's there, but I'd encourage people who are considering the Clean Tech Open to think about some of the other upsides of value uh, and put even greater weight on them. So the second aspect that uh, the Clean Tech Open will really kind of tout about itself is their global network of mentors. And so here again, this is was an aspect that I really didn't originally place a whole lot of value on. Um, as I said, it's not my first rodeo. Uh, my fifth startup had some success and also some, you know, some less than success in previous startups. But I really didn't think we needed a whole lot of mentorship per se. But that said, I was absolutely blown away with the by the quality of some of the people, some of the mentors who were involved. When I went to the um, the national conference, Steve Blank. Jeffrey Moore, you know, Koshla, I mean, there were some really serious heavy hitters there, you know, talking with us. I mean, they were making big presentations, but also we had the opportunity to um, to be with them one-on-one. -on -one. And so I, my kind of feelings about the value of the mentorship really kind of did a 180 as I went through the clean tech open process. Um, but then, you know, at the same time as we were being exposed to these great mentors, you know, that, that exposure arrow goes the other direction as well. Um, the Clean Tech Open really provided tremendous exposure for us and for our startups. Uh, the, I'm not sure if they're still using it, but while we were there, they were really referring to the Clean Tech Open as kind of the, the Oscars of Clean Tech, because at the actual Clean Tech Open events, I mean, everybody who's anybody was there, and it was it was really amazing. Uh, everyone whom I follow on Twitter, um, you know, everyone who is a thought leader in clean tech, both you know, corporate and venture and uh, you know, on the entrepreneurship side, was there. And we had exposure you know, to all of them. You know, we showed up and we immediately were being pressed for media interviews. There were other volunteers uh, with Clean Tech Open who were helping connect us with uh, you know, business partners or corporate sponsors who might be valuable or, or helpful for us. And so that was of you know, probably undefinable value for us just over the course of a relatively small, you know, short amount of time, all of a sudden we were on the radar of kind of everybody who's anybody in clean tech. So that was, that was huge. Um, but probably still the most value, valuable aspect of the clean tech open process that we realized was around networking. So again, I was a I was an entrepreneur who was pretty well established in some areas, uh, especially around kind of energy technology, um, but wasn't kind of in the inner circles of clean tech. And so very quickly found myself connected with kind of all the people who were, um, and not just the you know, investors and you know, customers and business partners and the press, but also the other entrepreneurs. That I think is a, a highly underrated value uh, that probably a, a lot of people miss. Um, it's tremendously helpful just to get to know your peer group out there because you never know where the future will take you or anyone else. And there may be opportunities to collaborate in the future. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a self-selected set of driven, ambitious entrepreneurs who are trying to change the world for the better using you know, innovative capitalism. And uh, so I think there's a, a very natural bond among everyone who competes in the Clean Tech Open. Um, and that's that's been really helpful for us, uh, you know, even in the three years since we competed. Uh, we've already formed business partnerships with some of the other competitors, maintain a, a strong relationship with um, some of the other people who were, were there kind of in our cohort. And the Clean Tech Open itself 
you know, all the volunteers have been helpful in making connections, even to people whom we didn't meet or who weren't part of our cohort. They were a company who competed uh, the year, you know, prior or, or after. So, as you can see from our timeline, you know, before we competed in the Clean Tech Open, we had already raised a, a very small kind of seed round of capital just to kind of get some prototypes out in the field and validate that we could actually save some energy. Um, shortly on the heels of our strong performance in the Clean Tech Open, we closed a slightly larger but still you know, very small kind of angel round of funding of a quarter million dollars, which we used to get some kind of major pilot installations going, got to revenue, um, and really were able at that point to validate not just our technology, but the you know, market demand and the business model. And we're now at the point where so we've just opened up a new round of funding, uh, $800,000, and I'm, I'm pleased to report that we've already closed more than half of that. We're hoping to close the rest very quickly here. And that should take us to full product launch later this year. Uh, and then ultimately in the future, we'll, um, we'll probably raise another round of funding that's meant for kind of rapid expansion, both domestically and abroad. Um, and so, I, you know, I mentioned earlier that we think this is a big opportunity, you know, an opportunity worth billions of dollars. And you can see, you know, that others also kind of believe there's a lot of opportunity given some of the, the major exits in kind of the smart energy space recently. Opower just IPO'd a couple of weeks ago. Nest was acquired a couple of months ago, um, you know, with major, major price tags associated with them. And, you know, if we're going to move quickly and kind of do something at that scale, um, we need every, you know, every bit of help, every bit of assistance, every bit of kind of networking that we can get. And so what's really pleased me has been that the Clean Tech Open hasn't just been um, kind of a one-time benefit. It wasn't just a benefit for us in 2011, but it's, you know, once you compete, whether you win or, or not, you're always an alum of the Clean Tech Open. And so they've been there for us as we've been uh, adding investors to our investor group. They've been there for us, uh, helping us connect with high-level people and some of their uh, corporate sponsors, which is very helpful for us as we've been kind of moving into this world of demand response where we have to start engaging uh, you know, really big companies like utilities as opposed to just ignoring them, which we had been previously. And so, you know, once you go through the Clean Tech Open, it's kind of like having, um, you know, a, a really helpful <laughs> kind of older sibling around, someone who's already kind of connected and networked, and it's a good, good, you know, resource for you no matter what kind of uh, additional help or assistance you need. And again, if you're going after a big space, we think that's enormously valuable. So that was just a a brief kind of overview of one company, Smart Office Energy Solutions, its experience in the Clean Tech Open, but it's clear, given some of the success of other Clean Tech Open alumni companies, that others have perceived a lot of the same value. If anyone would like to discuss uh, our experience or my experience personally in greater detail, my contact details are on the presentation, and I'd welcome the opportunity for discussion. For those who apply to the Clean Tech Open, good luck, and uh, may the Clean Tech Force be with you.